Hello, everyone. I want to ask you how many people are concerned about eating GMOs? Raise your hand. Okay, nearly everyone. And I want to ask you to rate yourself from one to a hundred how vigilant you are at avoiding GMOs. That includes going out to eat, includes eating at other people's houses. How vigilant are you? Give yourself a number. Okay, how many people are the low vigilance? Zero to 20, raise your hand. 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80, 80 to 100. All right, now rate yourself how active you've been talking about GMOs to others. Low active, zero to 20, rate your, what, raise your hand. 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80, 80 to 100. All right, now some, some of you are at the bottom and some of you are at the top. For those of you who have been vigilant at avoiding GMOs, how many of you noticed an improvement in your health when you switched to a non-GMO diet? Many of you, excellent. Almost, almost everyone who was in the higher realms of vigilance. So I'd like to hear from you what kind of problems went away or got better. Anyone? Yes, in the back. Arthritis. How many people noticed an improvement in arthritis? Three of you, four of you, uh, and inflammation of any type. Lots of hands. Pain, raise your hand. Okay, so a lot of you clumped around pain, inflammation, and of course, arthritis. Another symptom that got better or disappeared. Yes. Digestive issues. Okay, how many people noticed an improvement in digestive health? That's the biggest, it's always the biggest number of hands. I've asked this question at over 150 lectures. Digestive health always is the grand winner. And that would include what? Inflammatory bowel, irritable bowel, acid reflux, bloating. What am I missing? That covers it, huh? All right. Another symptom. Yes. Thinking clearly. Thinking clearly. What would you say? No, sorry. <laughs> um, Thinking clearly, yes. How many people had better memory concentration, less brain fog? Raise your hand. Okay, how many people noticed more energy? Raise your hand. So that's always number two, increased energy, and I usually combine it with reduced brain fog. Always number two. Any other symptoms? Yes. High blood pressure. How many people noticed an improvement in cardiovascular health? Raise your hand. Okay, there was about s several of you. All right. Any other symptoms? So these, what happened was when I released Genetic Roulette in 2012, I started asking this question of conferences and I started noticing patterns. And I noticed, as we said, digestion was number one, brain fog and improved energy was number two. But then there were all sorts of other questions, other, other symptoms being uh, resolved. And so I, what I did was um, I created a film with Amy Hart on families that heal from serious conditions when they switch to organic food. So not just non-GMO, but organic. And in this film, there are two families with autistic sons who are no longer autistic. There's a clinic, a chiropractic clinic, where they treat a lot of infertile couples they have a 100% success rate. They put them all in organic food. 92 out of 92 couples now have children. They have people recovered from cancer, skin conditions, anxiety, depression. So it is a dramatic film that is based on science. There's a lot of scientists and doctors in there explaining why. I'll show you the trailer on this later in the talk. But we also, based on the results of the information that we got, we surveyed people from the Institute for Responsible Technology website, and you can go to responsibletechnology.org and sign up to be part of that uh, newsletter. And, our, and we, I published this year the results of the survey, and it was peer-reviewed and published in the International Journal of Human Nutrition and Functional Medicine. And it showed that there were 28 different conditions that improved when people switch to a non-GMO and largely organic diet.
The number one is digestive. We're going to focus on that to start, okay? And we're going to talk, I'm going to do this later. We're going to talk to, about the digestive problems and what could actually be causing those digestive problems. But what we're seeing is that the, of the 28 conditions, and again, digestive being at the top, it's not just humans that report getting better. Lab animals that are fed GMOs or exposed to Roundup, which is sprayed on most GMOs, have problems that are similar to those that improve in humans when they switch to organic. Same thing with livestock and pets. And the rates of disease, of these types of diseases, are going up in parallel with the increased use of GMOs and Roundup. Now, when you look at the pets, this is a, there was 3,256 people who responded to our survey about themselves or their patients or a family member. But 80 people responded in terms of their pets. And you could see that the number one reported improvement with the pets is also digestive. They also had similar results in food allergies, skin conditions, energy, weight problems, and joint pain. If you look at the animal feeding studies, now again, we're just going to focus on digestion to start. There were changes in animal feeding studies in the gastrointestinal system and gut bacteria, severe stomach inflammation, stomach lesions, excessive growth or damage of the intestinal walls, and a reduced ability to digest protein and minerals. In livestock, there was reported by, doc, by farmers and veterinarians diarrhea, gut bacteria, imbalance, and intestinal damage. In the humans, they reported irritable bowel, Crohn's disease, acid reflux, ulcers, gut, pla gut pain, and bloating. All of these associated with eating GMOs or, or non-organic food and getting better. Now, when we talk about the digestive problems getting better, it was significant. This is the breakdown. People would say digestive orders, but then they'd have to measure how, how much of their digestive health or any of those conditions improved. And you could see, if you look at this, the biggest category was significant improvement, followed by nearly gone, followed by complete recovery. 80% of the respondents were in those three categories, just by switching to an organic diet or non-GMO and largely organic diet. If you look at the statistics in the United States, you can see that the amount of glyphosate, glyphosate is the active ingredient in Roundup. Roundup is sprayed on most GMOs because most GMOs are Roundup ready, genetically engineered specifically to be sprayed with Roundup. You could see that as the glyphosate spray on soy and corn that's genetically engineered went up, so did the hospital discharge diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease. Here we have deaths due to intestinal infection. And here is peritonitis, which is inflammation inside the, the stomach lining. All of these show correlations. It doesn't mean that one causes the other if you just look at the chart. But if you understand that there is a plausible reason why glyphosate or GMOs might create digestive problems, then these correlations are more meaningful.